Hello, this is David. I am David Mandel, and I'm giving a little short video on Zoom on online meetings. Um, with this coronavirus, with the pandemic, we everybody's doing online meetings now, people who have not done them before. So I want to give a little video on just how to get started if you've never done an online meeting. This is not how to schedule them or anything like that. This is just how to join one and use it. Uh, we'll be using Zoom because that's what both um, uh, Portland Community College uses where I teach and what the Benton County Master Gardener Association use, which I'm a member of. So um, this is for my students and fellow master gardeners and for anybody else um, since it's public and it's on YouTube so um, okay um, to get started using zoom what happens is you will probably get an invitation something like this that will give you a time and a day and a zoom meeting room that will look something like that it will be a three a digit thing. Uh, sometimes it's three digits dot dash three digits dash three digits. Sometimes it's three dash three dash four. I don't know. And it may have a URL uh, that says hit this thing and then it will take you to the Zoom meeting. Okay, there's two ways to get into Zoom. Um, you can either go to Zoom. Well, I go to Google and just uh, go to Google dash download and you can download the Zoom software. If you happen to be on an Android tablet or, or phone or a um, um, Apple, in that case, if you're on an Android, go to the Android Play Store, search for Zoom, and you'll find the software to uh, It will be loaded like any other app. If you're on an Apple, go to the Apple Store. It will be uh, and do a search and it will load just like any other app. If you're on um, other operating systems such as Windows, uh, go to Google in your browser, search for Zoom download and it will take you to a URL that is probably pretty logical. This is Download Center. If I go to Download Center, it brings up the uh, it, the software I need to download. Now in my case it came up with Linux because I happen to be on a Linux operating system. If I was on Windows it would come up with Windows. So uh, that's cool. Um, and that will give you the software um, if you need the software. On the other hand you may not even need that if you, if they give you a URL if you just type in that you are or type in click on the URL it will take you to the right thing it will download all the software you need into your browser and you won't need anything on the other hand if you know for some reason you do need the software uh, you know how to get the app now I have the app on all my computers but then I schedule meetings and stuff too so um, okay and in this case, I pressed, I clicked on the URL and it brings me into the meeting. Once the host has started the meeting, I can join. And, or if they can figure it right, even a few minutes before the host joins. Okay, once I have joined, I get a screen that looks something like this. Let me go in and kill my webcam. The webcam I'm running is a webcam application and I want to kill that because I actually want to use that same webcam in Zoom. So I got to get rid of it as um, in the computer. Okay, now it's unused. The webcam's not being used. And let's look at the buttons I have down here. The one button I have is for um, join the audio session or actually if this is your first time in or if you had, haven't come in many times before it will ask you automatically as it comes up how to join the audio session. Let me join the audio session here 
when I join the audio session, it brings up a window kind of like this. It says, do I want to join by using a telephone or do I want to join using a headphone on my computer? I, if I can, I join using a headphone on my computer or a microphone on my computer. Um, if I ha am at a Starbucks or something, uh, not that we can go to Starbucks nowadays, but if I was at a Starbucks, I would probably use my telephone because I will get, um, uh, I don't have much bandwidth there, internet bandwidth, and I will get better uh, communication if I use my telephone. Or if I'm in a rural area, out on a farm, I, I may well use the telephone. Um, most places though, if I have broadband internet, um, I will use the computer audio. I prefer a headset over a microphone because usually headsets are designed so that they pick up just my voice and they don't pick up all the background noise. Most microphones, unless I have maybe a movie grade microphone, they're going to pick up all the background noise. Um, and actually, I have some headsets that also pick up all the background noise, but I don't use those with Zoom. Um, when you first go in, you get a chance to uh, test your computer mic and speakers. The first couple times you use Zoom, do that. Um, I don't do that anymore because it's all set up. It works, and I have gotten so lazy, I trust that it works. But I do recommend going in uh, to test your mic and your speakers before you join the meeting to get everything working just right. And you can adjust the volume and so everything will sound just right when you go into the meeting. Uh, after you've done this a few times, you don't need to do that. So I will join the meeting with um, the audio system. Okay, then if I go down here, I will see that there is a button for mute or unmute. If I unmute this, I can then talk to people over the microphone and um, they should be able to under to hear me. If it's muted, of course, they can't hear me. And I strongly, strongly recommend in most meetings keeping this muted except when you're actually speaking because that just cuts down in all the noise that everybody hears. If you, if you leave um, your microphone turned on, you know, if I'd leave my microphone turned on, people get noise every time my dog barks. Um, so I normally turn that off. Um, now, of course, the mic is kind of funny in this case. You're picking it up because I'm running screen capture software that catches the microphone. So we're not capturing it through Zoom. OK, other things. Another button here is video, uh, which will turn on my webcam. If I have a webcam, webcam's optional. You don't need one. But if you have a webcam, it turns on the webcam and people can see your pretty little face. Um, or here we can see Tux himself. Um, so, yeah. OK, now, um, and I can turn that off. I can turn it on. I guess I'll leave it on, but often I turn these off just to save bandwidth. Um, unless I'm the host, then I usually, well, I've got a fancy system. <laughs> but if I was a host in a normal meeting, I'd probably leave this turned on. Um, depending on my bandwidth and whatnot. Uh, this gives you, this is where you can invite other people to join the meeting. I rarely use that um, um, because I invite them in in the setup software. Um, this is a list of our participants in the meeting. The participants, and this can be hundreds of people, but but uh, in this case, there's Tux and there's me, David Mandel. Um, the one guy is labeled as host. 
host controls the meeting. He's the person or she's the person who started the meeting, who did the scheduling, and really controls all the access rights. So if they want to kick me off, they can kick me off. If they want to mute me, they can mute me if I'm causing a disturbance. They can turn off my um, video camera, you know, whatever. Um, okay. There's another button here. I'm going to skip um, uh, screen, sh share screen for the moment. But there's a button here called um, chat. Chat is um, brings up a chat screen, and I can type things in in this screen. So, hey, I have a question. Um, okay. And then everybody can see that I have a question and somebody may want to um, um, ask me about it or, or at least let me type in my question. Or I can, or the host may say, oh, you have a question. And then um, I, I can chat in, chime in with the microphone. Um, the chat area is really very, very useful. Um, I can also maybe able to record the sessions. Whether I can record or not kind of depends on whether the host gave me access to record or not. The host can record sessions. They can either record them to put on their own workstation or they can record them um, to put on the cloud and make available for everybody. Um, so let's go into screen sharing. Screen sharing is a cool tool, and this is more of an advanced feature. Your host may use the screen sharing a lot. If I, when I use, when I give classes and stuff, I use this an enormous amount. Um, uh, some people use it less than others, but the screen sharing allows me to broadcast my whole, whole computer screen across the system. So let me try sharing my screen and. And it did it. OK, sometimes that will not work because um, I may not have, um, be, because host has to give me access to do that. I forgot and I gave myself access to do that in advance. So I, I can do screen sharing. Um, and this lets me share my whole screen. I can then, you know, so if I want to do something like um, show pick photographs of, of you know, uh, I don't know, of electronic parts. Well, that's a lot better than the webcam. Um, I can show photographs or, or of gardens. Uh, these were taken in uh, Portugal, I believe, uh, around the city of Porto, um, or possibly in Galicia, Spain. Uh, they grow a lot of nice camellias there, and um, I like flowers, so. Uh, the, um, these are camellias in Portugal. And there in the background, you see a, uh, the vineyards where they grow their vineyards. Unlike, say, in France or, or Oregon, they grow their vineyards in a trellis system to make a wine they call Alba Burrito or something like that. And they have to be grown in a, in, on a terraced system as opposed to the fence-like hedging systems that they use, say, in France or in um, Oregon um, or California or Greece or Israel or <laughs> most of the world. OK. Um, anyway, so basically, I can show a PowerPoint. I can show anything. There are some features. There are a lot of other features within uh, Desire to Learn, where, or I'm sorry, within um, Zoom, where I can do maybe I can do PowerPoints. I can do things like that from within Zoom too. There's a whiteboard system. I don't use it much because I think it's clumsy, but other people use a great deal. Um, instead, I usually just share my screen and I use the applications on my computer. But the uh, but there are a lot of applications built into Zoom itself that uh, a lot of people like. They work very well. Um, um, 
Oh, okay. And then when I want to stop sharing, I can stop sharing or I can pause sharing, whatever. And we go back to the screen like this. Uh, any other features? Uh, there is another feature. Um, someplace. Um, well, in, in, anyway, uh, this was meant to be a small inter introduction. Um, I think it served as a small introduction. So with that, I will um, I will end the video. Bye bye.